Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Tim Scheiger and Ryan Ruggles. There we go. Up. All right, we just had a like a 35 minute conversation before we got in the conversation. I had to like stop them and say like, hey, I want to like know some of the stuff when we're recording. So uh, I'm really excited to have uh, both Tim and Ryan uh, on the podcast. And before we get to the three questions, uh, they do have a new book and we are recording this in September, but releasing this literally the day after it's released. Uh, it is the new book called Su Successful Middle School Instructional Technology um, from AMLE. So uh, first of all, congratulations for doing that. Thank you. Thank you, George. Appreciate that. Anytime I can hit another button other than the air, <laughs> people are happy. So <laughs> Uh, so before we get into your questions, uh, Ryan, can you give us like the one minute teaser of this book that is available now for purchase? Absolutely. I, I, I tell you what, so this, this book, Instructional Technology, uh, Successful Middle School Instructional Technology, uh, is, is definitely a, a labor of love. Uh, Tim and I have several passions. Number one, we are both former middle school principals. Uh, so we, we love the middle school level, Lo love middle yeah. school kids. Uh, those are our people. Uh, we're also very passionate about leadership uh, and passionate about instructional technology. You know, and last year we were having some good conversations around those topics. And we said, man, we're seeing this, this pushback against the use of technology within our schools. Right. So reach out to Omni and, and propose our idea. Uh, and, and really it's about creating the, the vision and the leadership and the structures to successfully use instructional technology and to use it uh, to it to its best and to its intention uh we're talking about innovative teaching and learning and how to get there so so the book itself is not tips on how to use technology better it's about right. creating that vision creating that you know what kind of leadership do you need to make that happen and then what structures you need to have in place because let's face it right now in any school in america uh you ask about what is their instructional technology plan uh th they might look to their instructional technology coach uh right. and it, it's it's a one one person show uh, so this is about the systems. This is about the philosophy and, you know, really marrying that philosophy with what we know best about kids as well. Uh, so we're, we're super excited for this work. We're super excited yeah. about uh, talking about structural technology in the frame of using it to improve schools. I love that. And I know, and we're going to talk, I, one of the topics that I know you discussed and I think is really important one, we'll talk about in the, the podcast, a little teaser to go to the other podcast and a teaser for the book. Um, is digital wellness, which I find is a fascinating term. And, and what's Absolutely. that look like? And what does that what does that mean? And what you're sharing? So all right, so thank you. So anyone, anyone listening to the podcast right now, you can actually see the link to the book uh, in the description down below. So make sure you, you check it out. So Tim, we're gonna start with you. Uh, I know you've done many different roles in education, you have this book coming out, I'm sure there's teachers that have been in your career, whether it's a superintendent, whether it's a teacher, whether it's a student who have had a, a big impact on you. But when I ask who's a teacher who influenced you, who's one of the first people that comes to your mind and why? Yeah, I'm going to go back to my middle school days as a student. And uh, John Shankinick was his name. He, he was our teacher for mass media. And it was an elective. Uh, and he was someone who connected with me, uh, connected with, with students really well. The topic, uh, the different, the, the subject of mass media. I mean, back in the day, we're talking, you know, mid late eighties. It was the the technology base. There was, you know, making movies, slideshows back in the day, projector, a little eight millimeter, did little claymations and those kind of fun things. But it, it was the the way that that he made me feel about the the innovative practices, the allowing creativity and. Uh, in many ways, uh, uh, giving permission to try new things out. And that's what uh, a, a big part of, of how I have become a, a teacher and, and leader. I never forgot about that, giving the permission to, to try new things and, and take risks without, without major consequence. And so, um, so John Shankinick, uh, uh, Butler know. Middle School. Yep. So he was... Uh, Big time, big time influence around me on why I got into education and how I became uh, the type of teacher and leader uh, that I am. You know that. So we, I actually remember, um, wasn't in middle school, I was in high school, and you know I'm a few years younger than you, based on what you told me, how old you are, and uh, just a couple of years though. I'm not, I'm not that far off. <laughs> um, the but my teacher Eric, or sorry, 
I just know. So like, it's funny because his first name is Mister, right? <laughs> it's Mister. <Bellamy. laughs> I'm like trying to, right? Trying to like, I think I got a son's name actually in there. So I, Bob Bellamy, he was awesome, and uh, we did. He got us to do commercials, and you know, I'm a big basketball guy, and that was the time of like D Brown and the Reebok mm-hmm. pump. I don't know if you remember those shoes. Oh, yeah. Like pump them oh, yeah. up. He like pumped them up before he did the dunk contest. So we did this uh, commercial and we're like getting these new shoes and then we're dunking, but we're actually dunking off of like a, a springboard. Right. Which probably, I don't even know if you're allowed to do in school anymore. Like I'm like thinking about all the the stuff we probably couldn't be allowed to do uh, in, in schools anymore that we did. But just when you were telling that story, it was like, we took days to edit those videos on VHS tapes and stuff like that too. And so I think I, and I, this is something I always think is really kind of interesting. I don't think that kids are better. I would actually say I am, I was better at technology as a kid than kids are today. Not because I was way smarter, but the, for you to be good at technology, it was super hard, right? Like mm-hmm. I could, I could do the same video that I did in that within probably five to 10 minutes that took us days to like put together. And like, it was just kind of interesting. So I think part of that too, is we have to really ensure that the easiness of technology, we still have to develop, you know, wisdom in our kids. Right. Cause I think sometimes we we have this assumption like, Oh, wow, these kids are really good at this. No, no, the technology has got way easier to use. And so mm-hmm. what does that actually look like? So I, I love that answer. It reminded me one of my, Honestly, one of my favorite things I ever created in school. I could actually, and we did it too. I got the power. I don't know if you remember that snap song. <laughs> oh, right? yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, probably, and we, you know, you're not getting copyright. Well, I probably got mm-hmm. copyrighted strike for just for actually singing that one part on YouTube, right? But we didn't have to worry about that because no one's ever going to see this VHS tape, uh, mm-hmm. you know, from when I was a kid. All right. So, Ryan, oh, yeah. you know, I know you're currently a, a superintendent in Wisconsin. It was actually hilarious when we were doing this. Ryan's band uh, from his school is actually playing tunes. He's like, oh, please, like, uh, out of any time, this is probably not the best time to do it, but it was, it was, it was nice to see. So when you think about um, an administrator who had an impact on you, whether it's a kid, whether it's a colleague, who's someone you think of and why? Mm, absolutely. So many good administrators over the years and, and, and good teachers over the years. Uh, the one that kind of jumps out to me um, and, you know, Kind of comes to me. I don't know if I've I've, I've told them, and I, I've 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 told them many times oh, how much I appreciate them, but maybe not to this extent. And that's Dr. Right. Tim Culver. Um, so when I was a middle school principal in in Sun Prairie, um, Dr. Culver was my superintendent for most of those years, uh, and was was really such an influence on me as as a, as a leader, uh, and really kind of pushed in me that leadership. It encompasses so many things, and and he was the one that 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 really pushed me in instructional leadership, uh, as as well as just organizational leadership, just making sure that I'm, I was skilled in in all those areas. You know, he he was a type that I was able to have hard conversations with. He would have hard conversations with me, and the next day, I I, I knew we were good. Like like right. he he was pushing me to be better. Uh, you, you know, he was having conversations with us around diversity and equity before that was even a conversation that was being had all, all over, you know, so he was definitely a, a, in front of his time in that regard, uh, but just pushed us to be better. Uh, and we were able to have those hard conversations. And even even to this day, I I look at his leadership style and there's things that I, that I try to mimic as well. Well, you Tim, know, if Tim, if you're listening... I just, oh, yeah. I just looked up Tim on Twitter, Googled him. So, uh, yeah, so you can see he's had a quite an impact. And I think it said he was 42 years. Does that seem right? Like, this is the same guy. So, like, 42 years in the profession, I'm sure he's still yeah. having an impact, too. And, you know, that, that to me is one of the best things that when you have someone who challenges you, and but you trust them, because I think mm-hmm. sometimes – you know, you have some of those hard conversations and if, you know, you're not making eye contact the next day, you're like, okay, well, something, something's off here too. So, you know, like, it's not, it's not a, I think sometimes we can take it personally or we can come off as it's a personal, you know, mm-hmm. maybe attack in some ways, but 
it's really about how do you help people get better? So obviously for him to be able to do that with you, there, there's obviously a relationship in place. So I love, I love here, love hearing that. All right. So last question, Tim, you, you've had a, you know, uh, I don't want to say, I don't like, I don't want to say a long time in education because then, you know, since I am only a few years younger than you, then that means I've been in education a long time. Right. But you, you know, you've had, I guess you've had a lot of different experiences. Let's say it that way. So if you can go back to your first year in education, your first year as a teacher, you know, what advice would you give Tim, you know, at that point? I think uh, reflecting back to that first year, you spend a lot of time worried about lesson design, curriculum delivery, and very much a, I don't want to mess this session up or this okay. lesson up. And over time, you realize, oh, it's really about the relationship that you have with the students. Yeah. It's really about the uh, connecting with them. And so I think that it's really uh, don't be so, I'll call it robotic in quotes of focused on the curriculum and, and what you're doing. It's really get the connection and they will, uh, you, you need to entertain them to some degree. You want to make it fun. You right. think about, you know, how, how does the learner learn, put yourself in their shoes. And as a middle school teacher, it's how would you like to learn this? Right. And so over time I learned that and became much better at that. We had a lot more, I'll call it fun in the classroom. But I think that first year, especially that first semester was like, okay, um, if the principal is going to come in today, I want to make sure that my classroom management, you know, I want to see, want to, to make sure there's structure and all the little things, you know, the, that a good lesson will have. And I think I spent a, a lot more time thinking about that, that first year, the first semester, especially of just doing it right versus just take a deep breath and connect with the kids because you know the content it's delivered to them and, and, and have them, have them learn it as opposed to, you know, that, that teacher outward approach, you know, you know, it was so much, so much easier being a teacher when you're thinking about it from the learner lens. Yeah. And that first year, I think there's just that, I mean, there's a natural, um, I'll call it, instead of hesitation, there's that anxiety of wanting to do it right. right. Um, but I think that I would go back and say, Hey, take a deep breath, let it go a little bit. Just be who you are. Don't be, mm -hmm. you know, don't be a, um, a deliverer of knowledge. Right. So just teach and listen, please. You know, it's funny because if you could have said that to me my first year, I was already doing that. I didn't know any of the other stuff you said, like mm -hmm. design. <laughs> I was like, I don't know any of this stuff. Right. So I actually, that was one place I know I excel right away. And the other places, you know, curriculum, stuff like that. That's where I really struggle with. And I feel that that really, to be honest with you, helped me uh, a tremendous amount. I, there is a, a professor and I've shared this advice before that he gave me and not everyone likes it, but it, it mattered to me. He said, Hey, George, you love basketball, right? And I said, Oh yeah, absolutely. He said, he goes, when you play basketball with the kids, um, never let them win. Like, don't ever let them win. And I'm like, really? He said, yeah. He said, because if you let them, they know. And then they'll never know if they can actually beat you when they can actually beat you. Then, then it like, there's an accomplishment that they actually feel in that process. So I, I used to like, I was teaching grade four and I was like dunking on little kids at that time. And it was just kind of like, it was just kind of fun. like, now it was not, a, it was like, you know, it was a grade four hoop. Right. So it wasn't right. like, it wasn't a full, you know, but it was, it was funny. And we, you know, I'd talk trash and stuff like that. And it just, it, it just made the, you know, we joke around about it and stuff like that. And it just made my classroom experience so much better. And I, and I always think of that now, some of those kids I used to, to, you know, beat on the basketball court, they actually won national championships in college in, uh, in Canada. So I won't play them now. Right. So now I can, <laughs> I can still hold that over them. Like, Hey, the last time we played, you know, I beat you. So basically I'm a national champion in basketball, you know, until, until you beat me, but I'm not playing anymore. So, yeah. So, right. you know, that relationship piece is so Awesome. I love that you're, you're sharing that. All right. So thanks for being on the podcast and everyone who's listening, um, check out the new book. It is in the description down below. It's available now successful middle school instructional technology, Tim and Ryan, thank you so much for actually being on the podcast in time. Congratulations on the book. I know it's a, you know, uh, you know, it's a tough experience to write a book. So I, I, to get through it, I know it's a big deal. So congratulations and everyone check it out.